construction entrepreneurs. Uh, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Uh, Ty here with the uh, Construction Entrepreneur School and Services. And um, on this one here, I just want to get in here and talk about uh, some of the things I've been going through, uh, probably fr from uh, the end of last year till basically now. Um, and I and I expressed most pretty much everything comes out in my videos, right? On what, what I'm going through, what solutions I'm trying to play out, how, how I'm moving through whatever issue I'm going through. Um, like recently, I'll probably do a video as well. Um, on uh, I, I went out to a job site um, recently and filmed some work that we were doing at a school here in uh, Rancho Bernardo uh, in San Diego. And um, one of the ramps that I videoed uh, actually has to come out now. Uh, guy screwed up, uh, my guy screwed up. We didn't make a one foot transition, which is now part of a new handicap regulation. Uh, ADA regulations, can't say handicap, right? Say ADA regulations, um, that's the proper term. Um, and there's one foot transition before the ramp. We didn't do that. Uh, we wasn't normally doing it. We wasn't up to date on that. So we actually did this ramp now and have to tear it out. It's going to cost me probably about seven grand, right? Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. But that's one of the things that, you know, kind of go on and go through. We haven't had to do this in a long time, but it is what it is. So, excuse me. So, um, um, uh, one of the things I've been going through since last year to now is it's been hard for me to, to, to find work. I would say from last year up until maybe uh, June, maybe up until June. So because uh, June was when I, I would say May, or May, May was probably the time I kind of figured it out. So from January, February, March, April, May, so four months, right? Uh, the market has changed. I'm mostly bidding on public works type jobs. Let's see if I can get some more lighting in here. My, uh, my office doesn't have really good lighting in here. So here we go. There we go. That's probably a little bit better. Um, so anyway, so um, Bitten on work, I know is that there's a change in work right now in public works in California. And a lot of contractors was just turning to very low pricing. And still, it's still going on like that, very low pricing. And it's, I think it's starting to move up, but I need to see a little bit more to really make that determination. But I mean, they were just turning to low pricing to the point where you're like, are they doing it for costs or what's going on here? So um, what I did is I got very aggressive in getting all my bid results back. And I talk to you guys about that all the time. Getting That's another part of estimating is getting your bid results back and basically following up to get those results. Sometimes some projects, like there's projects I bid on that I don't find out until a month later. And those projects are usually with an already awarded general contractor or through or directly through with a client and they need to make uh, 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 budget decisions and things like that, whether it's through a client or through a GC. Usually those jobs that take a while um, is, uh, is it deals with those type of scenarios. Any other job is usually a hard bid and I find out the day of bid opening, which I recently posted a bid opening uh, on my website recently where we actually lost uh, we teamed up with another contractor and we actually lost that bid by, I think like 80, 81 grand. Uh, so you look at that, you're like, man, how, how can they do the job for uh, 81 grand cheaper than us, right? Well, it's about production. You know, I think it is. I think people are definitely probably marking up lesser if they're smart uh, and they're tightening up their production because that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, but it took me a while to know what it was, where to adjust, where do I 
uh, apply the changes at, you know. Uh, I went through a phase where I went through and I, um, uh, uh, you know, tried to mark up less on the job, taking out uh, labor burden, taking out fringes and marking up less, you know. Uh, went through a phase where, um, you know, I made sure my subcontractors gave me a uh, 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 decent pricing, you know, like, hey, I need you to be a little bit tight on this because I'm not landing projects like I have been. So I'm trying to work through the same. So I'm like, hey, tighten up your pricing. Then I also went through a phase where, uh, you know, as I started to get more da data in, more feedback, then I started tightening up my production. You got to realize that after you start doing work for a while, uh, you match where the market is at. So before this time, before this COVID time, the market allowed you to uh, uh, not to be as tight and to make a lot more money. Now the market has tightened up to where uh, your production has to get a little bit tighter and you're probably going to make a little bit less money. Uh, but once you understand that, you move toward that, then that's great, right? Then you're able to adjust. But it took me four months to figure that out, right? four months to finally make that adjustment. Next time, I want to make it in, you know, zero months and one month, right? I don't want to have to lose out on work on that time to where during those four month times, I had to, uh, you know, we laid off, I want to say like, uh, you know, I want to say, I want to say four or five guys we laid off. Now we're back up to seven guys right now, you know? Uh, um, so, and then work is not that great right now, but I have landed enough work. I think within the last, uh, two months, um, or maybe in the last month and a half, I probably landed 1.4 million in work and I'm expected to land, you know, uh, another one point, another million probably within the next month or so. Um, so I have picked it back up and now I'm kind of shaking it off and rolling through but it took a little bit of time to figure that out. And by me figuring it out, well, what, 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 what were those steps was that being very selective in the jobs that I bid on, right? So there's some competitors out there that would hand me my tail to me, okay? And I know who they are. I cannot beat them, right? They come in cheaper every time. So I started, I, at first, I'll bid on those jobs. Why? Because I was landing. It was really a numbers game. Turn out five, I get two, you know? Um, so it, it was what it, it was, what it was, right? So now, now that I know the market is tighter and I know people are really, you know, so now I focus on jobs that is going to get me more of the win. So now I'm spending more time looking at those projects versus just selecting projects based on title. Now I'm looking into those projects a little bit more like, okay, that's going to fit us. Okay, that's going to fit us. Okay, that one's going to fit us as well. And then I go ahead and bid those jobs or give them to the team to bid them. And that's, and that's what I've been doing is being very selective on those projects and avoiding the, the players that's in the game that's, that I really can't even compete with, you know? Uh, and a lot of people is like, oh man, so uh, I think I heard one person always, oh, why, why are we scared to bid against them? <laughs> and I laugh. It's not so much being afraid to bid against them, is that adapting to the new, adapting to the way the market is right now. And that's what it's about. Uh, uh, normally, we, we were bidding against everyone, whether we won a loss or sometimes won, won a lot less, whatever it was. But now, since this market has changed, and now since we're, we're looking at things a little bit differently, now we need to concentrate on a certain amount of, um, now we need to concentrate on a certain uh, uh, type of job that's going to guarantee us a win more so now than we were before COVID happened um, uh, or through maybe through the end of last year, right? So now I'm, I'm really selective on the jobs that we do bid on, very selective. And then I'm still testing the market. Like tomorrow, I have a bid that's due. That's with my, you know, the big, my big, biggest competitors in the market, and um, and my biggest competitors, they they are they can bid as a sub and they can 
uh, bid as a general, as a self-performing general, which, which that means is that they can bid as a sub, which is what I do. And then they can bid as a general and self-perform the concrete. So they can bid on the project as a whole, which I think the project is like, maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's like, uh, see what this, I'm gonna see what the value of this project is. That's what I'm trying to see. <laughs> See, I got another contract I told I forgot to tell you guys about too. Got another one. Huh. Oh, here it is right here. So let's see if I got the invite in here to see what this uh what this job is at. So this job is um so this job is uh so the engineer's estimate is five mil it's five million dollars in the engineer's estimate it probably come in at about six six mil we'll see sometimes it's five mil so my competitor will bid that job as a general bid on the whole five million and this and then since they do concrete in-house their self-performing the concrete gives them a big advantage, right? Uh, maybe later I'll, I'll see about doing something like that, but it takes a different type of team to do projects like that as a general uh, uh, versus just being as a sub, okay? But that is the money way maker. That is the way to go. Um, and I, I'm definitely trying to, fo trying to have us bid on more projects where we are only the GCs on the jobs. Uh, what if that's just concrete only projects or larger projects like that? Uh, I think just starting back out and getting back into the focus of bidding on jobs where uh, we're the GC and it's only concrete being done on that job. Uh, those jobs, they're very saturated. That's why I kind of got away from them. Because, um, uh, you know, those jobs, you got, you got, you know, 30 concrete contractors bidding on them. And they just, they, it was very, very tough to, uh, to compete. And it was a very tough, very tough market. So we'll, I'll start testing the market, see about that. Uh, I'm also testing the market to uh, constantly check on the non-prevailing side of the market. Uh, I'm not very competitive on that. The last bid I did uh, was a, a church I did. It was to a, a water GC. Um, and I came in pretty, I think I still got that bid somewhat around here. Let's see here, maybe. Thought I had it somewhere around here, but maybe it's already put away in the folder. Maybe it's already put away in the folder, but that bid was uh, uh that bid. I think I came in. Um, I think I came in at a hundred. Think I, I was a hundred and thirty grand higher than the lowest bidder. Now with those type of jobs. I don't, you know, I, I just kind of test the market. I don't really uh, um, put a lot of time and effort trying to figure out that market. I just really kind of decide what jobs I'm going to bid on it when it comes to non-prevailing. Is it working? Who's the general contractor? Uh, what type of relationship do we have with them? And then I'll go for it. Uh, that type of job right there, that general contractor, I like bidding to them. Um, but, you know, they... It seems like they were going after a maybe a uh, different caliber of subcontractors, you know, because I was 130 grand. Like, there's nothing I could do to lower my price 130 grand. I don't know where 
where they get it from. So I just can't compete in that market. And I got to, and I realized that. So when that, when that job comes out for a rebid, because they're going to do a rebid on it, they want to do some final numbers on it, best and final. I would not submit for the best and final because of who I'm up against and I see the results. Uh, and it also took me two months to get the results for those jobs, for that job. So I know not bidding on that. Now, would, if they come out with another job that's not prevailing, well, I go for it. Yes, probably will uh, because of the general contractor. There's another general contractor that I just got an uh, invite from. Um, and I, I'm, uh, I'm actually, they're actually on my list to, uh, to have us do a lot more work with. So, and that's what I'll do too, is I'll, I'll target you and I'll just flood you with, with estimates. And that'll help us build a relationship because eventually we're gonna either fall in the category to where like, uh, once we talk enough, Oh yeah, hey, I can do a quick bid for you if you need it. If you need preliminary numbers, let me know. I can produce those for you. And that's that's a lot of things that about, that's a lot of things that general contractors need is subs that's willing to give them preliminary numbers with with nothing attached to it uh, to help them out on on bids uh, to do quick turnaround bids because their clients are requesting it from them. So, uh, so they're looking for that. And I know that, and I know they're hungry for that. So I'm there. So I'll flood them with bids. That means that I'm bidding on everything that they put out, right? Bidding on everything that they put out to where, to the point where uh, I make it to where one of us uh, on the team are friends with them or get a good relationship with them. And before you know it, they, we either land a job or they just give us a job whether they feel sorry for us, whether they feel we're confident, whatever the case may be, I don't really care. As long as we got a job and we're being profitable, I take it as a win, right? So, uh, so checking those jobs out, being very calculated on what jobs, uh, uh, you know, come across the desk and stay on the desk to where we estimate them. And this time it just took me a little bit more time to figure that out. And I wanted to tell you guys that, that when you're facing uh, uh, things like that, where where you find yourself losing and losing and not winning, not winning, not winning, not winning, and it's just doing, do, you know, your backlog is just like dwindling down, dwindling down. You know, you got to look at the data. You got to look at what you're doing. You got to look at those different elements. What your subs turning in prices at? What your sales reps are giving you prices at for material wise, right? Because there's orders where you got to get numbers from them, right? Uh, whatever you're doing. So what what are they doing? What what kind of prices are they giving you? Um, uh, can they get lower on that? Can your subs get lower on that? Um, um, can you lower your price on your production? You know, while keeping your overhead intact. That's the key. So uh, and then looking at those projects, making sure those projects fit you more into a mode instead of just selecting them from based on the job title. And that's what's up. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, definitely, I learned a lot from this time here. Um, I'm, 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 I'm feeling a little bit better about where we're going and, and, and how we're doing. Uh, just got awarded another project today. That one is for $380,000. Um, I, I actually had this on my board here. I actually got a board with jobs posted up here where I turned it into different general contractors and I won all three of them. So looks like it's, it's looking pretty good. So uh, we'll see what the, the future holds. I got biz, two bids due tomorrow, already ready for them. Um, you know, definitely writing them up to be attractive. Uh, that's another key with getting work is um, like, I'll, I'll give you an example and I'll let you guys go. One of the jobs I'm bidding on tomorrow for a high school and it came in as a request from a general contractor to me. Now, mind you, that general contractor is getting bids from two other concrete subs as well. So uh, to be competitive on that bid and be a little more attractive is that the V-Ditch call for gunite, right? Uh, gunite V-Ditch, right? And use this because it's on a hill or a steep slope somewhere, right? They want to gunite it. Well, I was like, hey, you know, do we have to gut? Because it was only 170 feet long. 
And I was like, man, getting a price for 170 feet is like crazy. Cause I don't do gun. I got to call a gun night subcontractor. I was like, hey, can I do conventional concrete instead of doing the gun night? It was like, well, you can give me an ad alternate, right? So a lot of contractors don't, do, don't like to do ad alternates. Me, I don't know why they don't like to do ad alternates, but uh, a lot of contractors take that as very humbuggish. So they would just do either that or the other, right? So what I did was I got a bid for gun night and shot creep. Um, and then I'm gonna produce a bid to just do it with conventional concrete. I might, it, uh, I'm kind of looking at the elevations and I don't think the conventional concrete is gonna hold up on the slope. So I don't wanna be too much of a hassle to try to make that work. So I think I might just produce the gun night bid and then the shot creep, creep bid as an as a alternate as a bid alternate so they'll have it and then they can compare it when everyone else is just going to turn in the price with the gun knife so they're going to say okay let's entertain this guy a little bit more maybe we'll see but i'm willing to put in the work to get noticed like that so my construction entrepreneurs hopefully this was helpful on getting through hard times with landing projects not landing projects and how to and how to get through it a lot quicker than i did uh, hopefully that was helpful. Guys, we got some classes coming out. I will be launching them probably by the end of this week. Uh, I just got my dates on, on when we're going to be uh, uh, leaving town. So uh, I'll be launching those class dates so we can pop those off real quick. Uh, make sure you attend them. Make sure you turn on notifications. Make sure you share, you like, get, get this thing down. Uh, make sure you uh, get the CES estimating system. That's for 199. Make sure you get the overhead learning uh, uh, training program. That's four dollars and ninety nine cents. Go get it. Learn about your company overhead. I just recently did a video about that where I posted it in my membership page. I'm now flooding videos into the membership. Guys, if you don't want to sign up for any of that stuff, sign up for the membership page. Uh, I got two options available. One is $199, I think it's $199, $299 a month. One is $999 a month for the advanced experienced contractor. And I load up videos in there and courses in there, classes in there. Any class that we go through that's free that you may have missed, you'll find in there as well. Okay, so I'm loading plenty of content in there. Make sure you join that so you can get that additional information that you need. Without, without having to pay for additional money one by one by one by one by on the website, you can get it there. Uh, uh, they got some discounts going on there as well. So go check that out, join the membership page, get you some information from our website, get this information before it goes up. Cause soon it's gonna go up. I'm getting a flood of guys wanting this information. It's just gonna be uh, supply and demand after a certain point. So go get it now while you can. Get trained on it, add it to your business. I just, I just did a post on my Instagram. There's a company out there making $5 million plus doing your trade. Why, why can't it be you? Why? Why aren't you doing $1 million, uh, 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 $1 million a year, $2 million a year, $3 million a year, I just did a video recently where I'm telling you, you need to be doing a minimum of $3 million a year, minimum $3 million a year to allow you to pay for your staff, pay for yourself and, and, and have a lifestyle, you know, just have a, a, a medium lifestyle. <laughs> for real, you need to be pushing up to $5 million, $8 million, $10 million, $12 million, right? You need to be pushing up to those heights. And I'll let you know when I hit those benchmarks, Okay. But uh, but minimum, you need to be making three million, three million a year. What would it take to be making three million? So I did a video on that, on you know, not just this making, not just adding more tasks to you, and what you're doing is just working more efficiently with the same amount of time, right? And adding more to your team so you can get more done. Making three million dollars a, a a year. Everyone should be doing it. So watch that video. That video, I think, is in the membership page. Uh, if we if we posted it already, that goes straight to the membership page. So make sure you check that out. My construction entrepreneurs, hustle hard, then hustle harder. Catch you on the next one. Thanks for attending. Thanks for watching. Make sure you share and like.